Hi guys, this topic about auto crosses. You can see this fenestration in the oval window, and this is the piston over the incas, and this is the coda timpani, and you can see piston also. What is auto crosses? This auto crosses is term given by Adam Pollitzer in 1901. So this auto crosses term given by the Pollitzer. Adam Pollitzer, he was the leading auto laryngologist. What is definition? It is localized hereditary disorder of bone metabolism involving otic capsule leading to disorder resorption and bone remodeling. This definition is given in the Scott Brown. So this is localized disease of the otic capsule, mainly disorder resorption of the bone with remodeling. So. This definition involves the temporal bone, mainly the aortic capsule in autosclerosis. This bone resorption mainly classically any bone lead by osteoclast, and this new bone formation in bone mainly by lead by the osteoblastic activity. If you see autosclerosis, it's common in female. Ratio is about two is to one. Because of hormonal component, mainly estrogen hormone is suggested in activation of autosclerotic foci. It's common between 15 to 45 year of age, and this disease activated in the pregnancy, which increases the conductive hearing loss. Common in white and Indians, and 70 to 90 percent of cases, it's bilateral disease. Now. Etio pathogenesis. There is five factors: genetic factor, viral factor, autoimmune factor, hormonal factor, and cytokine factor are suggested in the autosclerosis pathogenesis. If you see the genetic of autosclerosis, there is autosomal dominant disease with variable penetration, and there is about one to ten. Auto sclerosis gene has been identified. That is called auto SC, and Col one A one A gene and Ras gene has been identified in activation of auto sclerotic foci. Virals in temporal studies, there is measles RNA virus has been isolated in the auto sclerotic foci. Autoimmune mainly antibodies against the collagen type two bundles has been isolated from the temporal bone of these type of the autosclerotic patients. So genetic factor, viral factor, and autoimmune factors now comes about this hormonal factor. Hormonal mainly angiotensin type two and estrogen hormone has been identified. The cytokines mainly bone morphogenic protein, tumor growth factor beta one, osteoprotogenin, so these cytokines leading to this activation of osteoclastic activity in autosclerosis, and this new gene. Osteoprotogenin and Rankel L. These two genes activate the osteoclastic activity in the autosclerotic patient, which lead to loose bone formation. And this these five factor ultimately lead to bone resorption and cellular and vascular inflammation, which you can see on promontory edge is hard sign and. This ultimately lead to spongiotic cavity formation and loose form, loose bone formation in the autosclerotic cases. If you stain during active stage of disease, the temporal bone with H E stain, you will find there is blue mental sign. The active foci look like bluish sky blue color in active stage. In This active stage, the promontory having more vascular and showing sword sign. 
After this active stage, there is newborn formation and remodeling by the osteoblastic activity. If you stain during this stage, there will be red mental cell. So, these foci of autosclerosis will show as a red sign, red mental sign, or it is red in color during the H stain by this inactive or advanced aut autosclerosis. In this disease, ultimately leading to normal lamellar bone replaced by the loose woman with disordered newborn formation. So this ultimately lead to autosclerosis. So these normal lamellar bone are replaced by loose woman bone and there is disordered newborn formation which fix the stapes over the oval window. Now talk about types of autosclerosis. Initially it divided into two types clinical and histological. Histological if you study the temporal bone of dead patients after their death is 8% of cases of temporal bone studies showing autosclerosis. It means it is quite prevalent but 8 out of 100 casualties if you study the temporal bone there is autosclerosis about 8% of cases but clinically it's there but clinically not represented conductive hearing loss. In clinical autosclerosis there is definitely either conductive hearing loss is there or sensory hearing loss is there. By audiogram or clinical presentation these type of clinical autosclerosis again divided into fenestral and retrofenestral cochlear type of autosclerosis. In fenestral the entire part of oval window 96 percent of cases is common location. This entire crural region of foot plate is called fissula antifenestral. Second common site is round window about 6 percent of cases, cochlear apex may involve 3 percent of cases and posterior crural region is involved about 1 percent of cases. This is the sequence of involvement in the fenestral type of autosclerosis. So most common site is fistula antifenestrum. This is MCQ. In retrofenestral or cochlear type of autosclerosis, there is endosteal layer with having highland deposition ultimately lead to SN or mixed hearing loss. Now talk about fenestral type of autosclerosis. There is five subtypes. Entry foci, posterior foci, circumferential biscuit and obliterative. In entry foci, there is entry crura region is involved. This is the most common site. In posterior foci, there is posterior crura region is involved. In the posterior foci, in circumferential, there is annular ligament is involved, but central region is clear. In biscuit type, there is annular ligament is not involved, but central foot plate, foot plate is involved. It is called biscuit type of autosclerosis, means annular ligament is not involved. In obliterative, there is both annular ligament involvement is there and central area with obliterative and cavitating foot plate is showing active disease. Now diagnosis, most common diagnosis by the clinical plus PT or impedance. If you see these type of cases, adult between 15 to 45, mainly female coming to your OPD with conductive hearing loss and normal tympanic membrane on autoscopy, sometime in 10% cases you may find sword sign. And these cases present with low frequency conductive hearing loss, there is AS curve on the impedance and bone conduction showing carotid nodes at 2 kilo hertz. And this carotid nodes and bone conduction is mainly because of A root that is direct vibration of bone leading to hearing system activation rather than B and C. B means 
through auricular chain c means normal air conduction through the system normal c is normal but in otosclerosis there is more hearing gain by the eta a a root so because of a root is more activated leading to carotid nose in the otosclerosis cases in 2 to 10% of cases there is sl loss or mixed hearing losses there in the otosclerosis now dd of otosclerosis any patient who present with normal tympanic membrane with conductive hearing loss is dd of otosclerosis like superior semicircular canal dissens dislocation congenital malleus fixation SOM are common DD. Imaging. Imaging you can do CT scan in mainly conductive hearing loss, absent carotid nose, pan cochlear, ABJ, uh, airborne gap, revision surgery, pediatric cases, unilateral disease are cases in which you require CT scan. I think you should do CT scan each and every case. It's not, now it's very cost effective, about 2000 rupees you will get. CT scan. Fanny and Simmons divided three stages of otosclerosis in their CT scan finding. Stage 1 if hypotense area or lucency is there in oval window. Stage 2 again divided ABC if basal turn is involved A, B is middle turn and apical turn involvement leading to stage type 2 C. In stage 3 is whole cochlea region bowl and sclerotic foci with double ring sign showing autosclerosis is stage 3 that is advanced autosclerosis. Now talk about some special type of cavitating autosclerosis. What is cavitating autosclerosis? It is when vestibule size is increased because of loose bone formation around it leading to large cavity formation in this cavitating autosclerosis if you see double ring sign there is expanding large cavity on the CT scan if you put the piston in this large cavity there is no use because this large vacuum is inhibiting the sound to propagate the middle ear and you see this lucency stage 1 over the foot plate and this is the advanced autosclerosis you can see double ring sign on CT scan. Now treatment, medical treatment you can give biphosphonate and sodium fluoride and 60 mg sodium fluoride in active disease where SNO or mixed hearing loss is there and active disease is there. Surgery, the minimum recommendation of surgery is there should be no active middle ear disease, minimum 20 dB hearing loss should be there drum should be normal, canal should be wide enough and there is no exostosis in the canal and speech discrimination score should be more than 60%. So this is the minimum requirement of STP surgery. The stepidectomy with piston you can do with microscope or endoscope it doesn't matter you should do with meticulous surgery. In some cases you can give hearing aid in mixed or SN type of autosclerosis a cochlear implant in the far advanced autosclerosis one new device is called DACS what is DACS it is direct acoustic cochlear stimulator device in which piston having the vibratory component if you put this over the oval window the hearing gain is better in the far advanced autosclerosis or mixed hearing loss. So this is DACS, direct acoustic cochlear stimulator device can be used in the far advanced autosclerosis. What is far advanced autosclerosis? If airborne gap more than 60 dB, air conduction more than 85 dB on PTA is called far advanced autosclerosis. This term given by Hausler and C in 1961. The management of far advanced with surgery and hearing aid DACS cochlear implants. Now talk about some important word, important points. Now like if you do fenestration anywhere between anywhere in the oval window, it doesn't matter if depth is less than 0.5 even. 
बट मोस्ट कॉमन साइट ऑफ पुटिंग द पिस्टन इज सेंटर और इन फिगर वन थर्ड ऑफ द ओवल विंडो बिकॉज दिस साइट we are the vestibule having maximum depth so your your piston is not going to touch the medial most wall of the vestibule that's why you are putting the piston at the central or inferior one third of the oval window so this is the ideal site of doing fenestration what is stepedectomy you can do by any route transcanal lamp parts or retro auricular approach where your piston putting and meticulous dissection of the stippage area is very meticulous so that there will be no trauma of any uh, this area like facial nerve or any other area which lead to complication so stepedectomy what is reverse stepedectomy in which fenestration and putting the piston is prior to the removal of stp superstructure is called reverse stepedectomy what is prerequisite of stepedectomy you should check oval and round window obliteration cochlear otosclerosis should not be there fixation of malleus and incus during intraoperative a risk of csf gusher you can check on ct scan facial nerve dissections you can check on ct scan persistent stippedial stippedial rt you can show, check on ct scan a previous surgery or trauma you should rule out by history now complication of stippe surgery most common is tympanic injury to coda about 30% of cases this is the most common complication second common is tympanic tympanic membrane perforation facial nerve injury is very less about 0.5% of cases perilymph gusher sn loss reparative granuloma if reparative granuloma is there you can give steroid drops or you can apply fgl meningitis perilymphatic fistula you can close perilymphatic fistula by connective tissue so these are the complication of stb thank you so much